To create a distressed and gritty grunge effect in Affinity is super simple. So you can see here I have the Affinity logo and I have some text. And this is from this YouTube channel's cover art. And when creating this, the problem I came up against was that I found this lovely font that I really liked. Let's go into this. What have we got? Rubery, very grungy, gritty, and very imperfect around the edges. But how do I apply that same effect to the Affinity logo here? And one way we can do this is by selecting the Affinity logo. And first of all, we're gonna apply something called turbulence. And this is gonna roughen up the edges, so to speak. And if we go to the bottom of the layers panel, click on the live filters icon. And then we're gonna to go to liquify. And it brings up this entire separate window and we can go in and do this. Oh, hey, that's not what we want, Dan, calm down. And then we're gonna look for the option turbulence, which is this one. Yeah, there we go. Liquify turbulence tool. And we've got some settings on the right hand side. So you might want to play around with these, particularly the speed. And we can use the left and right square brackets to adjust the brush size. Now let's zoom in nice and close. And let's go crazy. Now the thing I love about this feature is that we can kind of freehand this very quickly. So I'm just going to drag along the edge here. Da, da, da. And you can see it's quite literally just roughening up the edge. Now I'm doing this. Oh, I thought I was going to do it in one go then. There we go. Two goes. We'll settle for that. Now you can, of course, hold this down and just let it just bleed out everywhere and do its own thing. And this is kind of cool, but not what we want. Now, if you do completely screw this up or you went a bit heavy on one part in particular, there is a reconstruct tool somewhere, which I think is this one. Yeah, there we go. Just go back over it and it will just reset it back to its original state very quickly and easily. So maybe some of these bits, I'm just gonna reconstruct it slightly there, maybe a little bit there, but not too much. I want it to feel random as well. Then we could go and turbulenceify. That's not a word, Dan, but we could go and do it to this bit here. Maybe down here. There we go. Very cool. Right. Once you're happy with your turbulence thing, that's not a word either. Go and click on done. And there we go. For five seconds and no skill, that's a pretty good result. And the great thing about this is it's also a live filter as well here. So we can go back in and edit it. We can delete it. But now we need to go a step further and we need to add some gritty grunge. So what we're going to do is select this layer or folder, I should say. And then we're going to go and add a layer mask. And if we twizzle this down, you can see there we have our liquify turbulencing effect and we have our layer mask. Now we're going to switch over to brushes. Now we've got some basic brushes selected. I don't think so. And if I go up here, you can see I've got quite a lot of brushes. Most of these are from Envato and I'll throw my affiliate link in the description if you're interested. Honestly, this is where I get all my brushes from. They're amazing, but there's loads of websites where you can get free brushes as well. So what you want to search for is some gritty, grungy brushes. So I've got 20 grit brushes here and I flipping love these. They're so damn sexy. And what we can do is just click on one here. Now, remember, we are brushing into a mask, so this isn't permanent by any means, but we've got to make sure that we have the mask selected and that we're brushing with black or white. And we also need to select the brush tool. That's uh, quite important. There we go. So if I zoom out a bit now, these brushes are rather large. And again, we can use the left and right square brackets to adjust that brush size. And I love the fact that in Affinity, you get this live preview of exactly what your brush is going to look like once you've stamped it in. So using black, we're going to stamp that in there. Pretty good. And let's go back to brushes, pick another one. It doesn't really do anything. Oh, that's a bigger one. Okay, where are we going to go? Maybe there. Pick another one. I'm obviously doing this really quickly. You can adjust the size and stamp it there, stamp it there. Yeah, this is cool. Slightly different texture there. And if you do make a mistake, just remember you can switch to white and you can effectively just brush 
away all of your grunginess. But I'm actually quite happy with that, so I'm going to leave it as is. Now, of course, you can spend time refining this and make it far better than that. But there's one problem with these brushes, and that's that the Affinity logo is a vector shape, and the Liquify is a live effect. But the brush we're using is raster-based. So you can see, if I zoom in, it does look soft and very pixelated compared to that lovely crisp hard edge of the Affinity logo and of our text alongside it. So one way that I found to get around this is if we go to the Layers panel, make sure you've got the mask selected. And what we're going to try and do is sharpen up that mask. And hopefully it's going to sharpen the edges of those stamped brush effects. So again, we're going to go down to the live filter icon. And we're going to go all the way up here to unsharp mask. Grab the radius, crank it up. And you can see we have our unsharp mask here. Let's turn this off and back on. You can see the difference. In fact, let's drag it inside the logo folder. Yeah, there we go. Just so it's paired with everything else. And by turning that off and back on, it just gives those edges a bit more clarity and less kind of pixel blurriness. And then if we zoom back out, obviously you can spend longer on your design to get a better match between the type and the logo. But I think for a few minutes, that's not a bad result.